Can you remember that property that you spent hours trying to measure because of all those angles? I bet you can remember trying to find somewhere to latch your tape onto to measure rise and run, only to have it come loose over and over again. Well, Apex can't measure them for you, but in some areas it can make it easier. I've drawn all the lines to this point in our sketch, and I'd like to add a bay window. And you can draw angles in Apex in two ways, rise and run, and direct angle input that we call the turn feature. The first thing I'll do is zoom in so that we can see this a little better. Rise and run for a typical bay window is fairly easy to measure. In this sketch, the right side of the bay window has a rise and run of 2 feet by 2 feet. In a previous video, I talked about dimension stacking, which allows you to manipulate a line's length and orientation while it's not anchored. Knowing this, all I have to do to draw that first angle of the bay window is enter 2 feet down and 2 feet left. And it doesn't matter what order you enter it. I could have also done 2 feet left and 2 feet down. Also, if you mess up, all you have to do is press delete to reset the line to the last anchored point and try again. Again, that was 2 feet down and 2 feet left. You notice the heads up display near your line and also in the tracking port showing that you've drawn 2 feet to the left and 2 feet down, a total distance of 2.8 feet at 45 degrees. This gives you a chance for quick verification before you actually anchor the line. Once you're happy with your line, all you have to do is press enter to anchor the line and enter again to anchor the dimension. Now let's draw the face of the bay window, which is 6 feet to the left, and enter twice to anchor the line and dimension. To draw the opposite side of the bay window, you input the rise and run measurements in the same manner, 2 feet up and 2 feet left. In bay windows, all you have to do to draw the opposite angle is press the letter B. Now all you have to do is anchor the dimension. If you don't want this dimension here, in this case you don't because it's a redundant dimension and it can clutter up your sketch, all you have to do is press spacebar to remove it from display. That's all there is for simple angles, but what about those angles that cause you to pull your hair out? That's next. Let's continue this sketch by drawing 2 feet to the left and 15 feet up. Now we've come to what looks like a wing in the property that angles off to the left. Under ideal circumstances, you might be able to measure rise and run provided you can latch onto something, then drag your tape till you come in visual alignment with the other end of this wall, and then stake off this point with, say, your pen, and measure the distance between your pen and the point you eyeballed to complete your rise and run. Well, if you can do this successfully, that's awesome because all you have to do is take note of those measurements and input them into Apex just like we did with the bay window. But you know it's not always ideal, and there are all kinds of things that get in your way, like fences and trees to mention a couple. But that's where the turn feature comes in handy, and understanding how it works in Apex can make a huge difference in the way you measure in the field. This is a miter gauge. It's essentially a protractor with long arms designed specifically for measuring angles. It's made of Lexan, which makes it extremely durable, and you can measure both interior and exterior angles as well as the angle of deflection. Basically, all you do is butt it up against your angle, adjust the arms to take a measurement, then take note of the measurement. You may not need it all the time, but when you do, the miter gauge is worth its weight in gold. Apex offers these tools so you can contact us to order one. They make great Christmas gifts. Let's see how this works in Apex. Let's say you have your miter gauge and you've measured the angle to 53 degrees. All that's left now is to measure the length of the wall which you found to be 20 feet. Now you have all the information you need. To draw this wall in Apex, simply input the length of the wall, 20, the direction it turns, left or right, that you specify by pressing L or R, I'll press L, and then take a look at the heads up display in the lower left. You'll notice that it displays 20 foot line at 90 degrees to the left. That's because we automatically default to 90, but since it's 53 degrees, I'll change that by inputting 53, and then I'll press enter and the line is drawn. Again, that's the length of the wall, 20, the direction it turns, L for left, and then the degree, 53. I'll press enter to draw the line, enter again to anchor the line, and one more time to anchor the dimension. Drawing angles off of other angles is also easy using the turn feature. Let's say that you have a 15 foot line that comes off of this angled line at 90 degrees. You don't have to remember that that last line was 53 degrees because in Apex all you have to do is input what you've measured in the field. This is 90 degrees, so all I have to do is input the length of the wall, 15, the direction it turns, R for right this time, and you'll notice that since we automatically default to 90 degrees, all I have to do is press enter to draw the line, press enter again to anchor the line, and enter to anchor the dimension. 
Now those angled properties won't be so scary.